Amen. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Always, always. Praise to the Trinitarian God. Praise to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. Amen. Praise to the One who came and died on the cross for the sin of mankind. Yes, He's the One we praise, always. Praise to the One who is identified as the eternal Word of God. Amen. Praise to the One who came and died on the cross for the sin of mankind. Hallelujah. That man and woman can be made right with Holy God. Praise to Alpha and Omega. Amen. Praise to the Word of God, King of Kings. Amen. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in the beginning, when God created man and woman, his own image, God called everything was very good. Mm. We look at the story of the Bible on the man and woman, and we see Bible gives man and woman free speech. Yes. Freedom of speech. When man and woman question the, question the character of God, mm. God gives man and woman free speech, freedom of speech, when man and woman argues with one another. Yeah. But today, as we live in Britain, 2018, we would expect that freedom of speech is also practiced. Yeah, that's what we would expect. And that's why lots of people from um, countries where they don't have freedom of speech love to come to Britain because they see it as a country where freedom of speech is a value. We would look at, we would look at Speaker's Corner. Speakers yes, Corner right here. Stand out as where people practice their freedom of speech. Freedom of speech to criticize the people, mm -hmm. freedom of speech to critique the ideologies, freedom of speech to critique the false ideologies. Yet, Parliament of England, heartbreaking event took place this week when the people shut down because they wanted to practice their freedom of speech about ideology called Islam. Yeah. I know it's it feels like sometimes that the speaker's corner is the only place left really that we can talk about Islam because sometimes some, sometimes all right sometimes but uh, in parliament we see how a question that was put about Islam was quickly shut down let me read you what that question was it was from a lord a UKIP peer his name is Lord Pearson and this was I think on Wednesday he asked this question he said he asked if Her Majesty's government, whether in pursuit of their anti-terrorism strategy, they will require preaching in mosques and teaching in madrasas in England and Wales to be monitored for hate speech against Muslims. Now, Hatim, why do you think he would ask a question like that? Oh, well, I've been to mosques and I know some mosques doesn't teach, some mosques doesn't use their own language, love language. Right. There are the things happening in the mosques where we see Follower of religion called Islam end up fighting for ISIS. Mm. There are the things that are the things that's been teach in the mosques where people go and take the life of non-Muslims. Mm. So I think it is legitimate question to ask. Let's hear what people are teaching in the mosque. Yeah. So I wouldn't call that as hate preacher, but something happened soon after Lord Pearson put this question to the House of Parliament. Okay. Um, before we get there, let's also just uh, give some concrete examples of what we mean. Uh, now, there was a documentary 11 years ago now called Undercover Mosque. It went out on Channel 4. This is 2007. And these are some of the things uh, that were said in that. It says things like, um, there was a guy there called Abu Usama, who is still a, a preacher, actually, in the Green Lane Mosque in Birmingham. And he said, he's on record as saying, I think in this documentary, saying that Christians and Jews are enemies to Muslims, um, and that jihad is coming to unbelievers. And he also referred to unbelievers as kafar. Not only that, but we have, um, the UK government has invited to this country um, particular sheikhs. Let's think of another one. In 2016, a sheikh was invited called Saeed Musaffa uh, Shah Qadri. He was a Pakistani cleric. And he was, he was allowed into Britain having praised um, the killer of, do you remember the shopkeeper in Glasgow who was killed? He was an Ahmadi shopkeeper. And in the eyes of lots of Muslims, that means you're a non-Muslim. He was killed for wishing his customers happy Christmas. And this sheikh praised this guy for doing it, but our government decided he was okay and that he could be let in. And that's only from what we 
hear from the news. Mm. I remember I sat in a mosque once where I heard that people should be killed if they leave the religions of Islam. Then I heard that husband can beat the wife and wife has no excuse to question, no right to question. Or where I heard people who do not accept Muhammad as the prophet and who criticize Muhammad, they should be killed. They are kafir. So I think it is legitimate question to say, let's hear what has been taught in the mosque that people are ending up the taking the life of non-Muslims. And just let's also say that this is not just an issue in mosques. We know from uh, the Henry, what is it called, the Henry Jackson think tank, uh, that actually this country has let in hundreds of extremist preachers to universities as well. So this is not just a question for mosques. It's a really legitimate question that we should be asking. Lord Pearson was absolutely right in raising that question. But what was the response that he got? Okay, let me read the question again, and then we, hear, we read the response. Mm. Her Majesty Government, Beda, in pursuit of their anti-terrorism strategy, they require preaching in mosques and teaching in madrasas in England and Wales to be monitored for hate speech against non-Muslims. And what is the response? Yeah. Uh, first of all, who else thinks that's a good question to ask? It's just a good question to ask. Yes. Yeah, you think it's a good question to ask. Thank you. Yes. But this was the response from Baroness Warsi, Saida Warsi, herself a Muslim. Okay, this is how she responded to that question. She said, um, could I ask Her Majesty's government whether in pursuit of their anti-terrorism strategy, they will require preaching in the form of oral questions and debate in your Lordship's house to be monitored for hate speech and Islamophobia against Muslims. Let me break that down for you. What she's saying is, she's effectively completely avoiding the question. She's saying the question is not relevant and she's actually turning it into an attack against Lord Pearson, accusing him of preaching and hate speech within the House of Lords. So in other words, asking for mosques to monitor hate speech is hate speech. How on earth did we get in this situation? They, that, that is a miracle question, but there is something in the ideology of Islam. There is something in the teachings of Muhammad, the moment you want to examine them, the moment you want to question them, you are called hate preacher. You are identified as someone who is, who is in hate speech. And that is, he is only asking, can we monitor what is going on in the mosques? Because we look at around and we see most of people who are end up for ISIS, fighting for ISIS, are coming from mosques. Mm. Are they coming from the streets? No. Mm. Are they coming from the university campus with the campus with this education? No. They are coming from the mosques. Yeah. So there is something going on in the mosques, and we want to see what they are teaching about non-Muslims. We want to hear their love language, mm. but. The moment you want to hear about the love language, suddenly you are called Islamophobia or hate preacher. But anyway, I, I, I just find it extraordinary. I find it extraordinary that even a, a legitimate question like this can be shut down so quickly. It begs the question, what are Muslims? What are Muslim peers like Baroness Warsi? What is she so afraid of that the answer will be? What are they so afraid of? But to find out what mosques might be teaching, where do we need to go? We need to go to Islamic sources and we need to go back to the Quran and to the Hadith. And let's see whether or not they have something to say, if you like, what is their love language towards non-believers? So while today people who are sitting in the House of Parliament shutting down the question of Islam, we want to see what is the Holy Book of Muslims say to us about non-Muslims. So, we, when we go to, we go to the Quran, we identify it as the eternal word of Allah. And let's see the love language, yeah. eternal word of Allah uses towards non-Muslims. Uh, I've got 
an example. Uh, this is what this is what the Quran says about Jews in particular uh, who disbelieve, who do not follow Allah, because there were Jews in that time who who didn't accept Muhammad as a prophet and who rejected what he had to say about God. And this is what Allah says about them. This is in Surah 516. Shall I inform you? This is talking about the penalty for unbelief. Shall I inform you of what is worse than that as a penalty from Allah? It is that those whom Allah has cursed and with whom he became angry and made of them apes and pigs and slaves of tahut, that means kind of false religion. Those are worse in position and further astray from the sound way. Allah turns Jews into apes and pigs. I think that's terrible. I think that's very anti-Semitic language. Why is hate speech. While Quran teaches this language for Jews, it is not surprising that we hear from people who follow the religion of Islam calling Jews and Jews and Christian pigs and eggs. Very, very loving language. Another example. So it comes again from the Quran. So let the people be quiet in the house of parliament and let the Quran itself speak. Mm. Surah 98 verse 6. Surely those who disbelieve from among the followers of the book that Christians and Jews mm -hmm. and the politics shall be in the fire, in fire for hell, a bonding terror. They are the worst of mm. creatures. The worst of creatures, the Quran, for a 98. That's not language, does it? No, that's hate speech. That's hate speech coming from the Quran itself. So that is only two words so far we looked at. Mm. I am wondering, when the people who are sitting in the House of Parliament are going to call this book as the book of hate speech or hate preacher. Mm. I wonder sometimes. Yeah. Can I give example? you another example? Yeah. This is Surah 48 uh, verse 29. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and those who are with him are forceful against the disbelievers. I'm a disbeliever, you're a disbeliever and merciful among themselves. Treat the disbelievers forcefully, but be merciful among yourselves. Seriously ask yourself the question, what is the Quran teaching Muslims about their attitude and their actions towards unbelievers? And ask yourself by what we've just read, should this be monitored or not? Those are, those are the verses from the Quran and they are being taught in the mosques. Should they be monitored or are a uh, um, member of the house people, what does he call them? Also, yeah, are they correct to shut us down when it comes to the Islam? When are they going to speak about the Quran, which doesn't give very loving language towards the Christians and Jewish and even to politics? But can I say something else, I think? Like, if there was a problem, if there was a problem in churches of people using this kind of language, of Christians being uh, hateful, of committing repeated acts of violence against non-Christians, I would want that talked about. As a Christian myself, I would want this exposed. I would want this brought to the light. Of course I would want people to talk about it. And I think, because everybody knows that it's fine to be critical about Christianity but not of Islam, that the whole House of Lords in that situation would go, yes. Uh, when there have been scandals, for example, in the church in the past, terrible, awful sexual abuse scandals, the church has been very open about wanting there to be investigations and all the rest of it. Um, and yet you raise these questions against Islam immediately is shut down. That is wrong. That's wrong and that's anti the principles of free speech that this country has enjoyed for such a long time. Yeah. It is amazing when it comes to Islam, suddenly free, free speech turns and transforms and becomes Islamophobia or hate speech. Yeah. But when it is about Christians, when it is about Christ, it becomes the freedom of speech. But there's also something theological here, isn't there? Because actually, um, it's the, even within Islam itself, uh, you shouldn't expose people and you shouldn't expose Islam for what it is. We know that from various hadith, um, that you shouldn't, that you shouldn't ex expose things. But that's completely the opposite in Christianity. We worship, in Christianity, worship Yahweh God, who is a God of light. In Him there is no darkness at all. 
it says about God, it says it's impossible for him to lie. And we see examples of Christians in the Bible being p punished very harshly for when they tell half truth. Go and read Acts 5 about Ananias and Sapphira. Look what happened to them when they didn't tell the whole truth, when they lied against the Holy Spirit. God takes truthfulness very, very seriously. And so we, we want to go further than just exposing the lies of Islam and exposing what's, what, what people want to be kept in the darkness, even in Parliament. And we want to say, leave Islam altogether, Muslims. Leave, a, leave this religion where actually there's so much darkness in it and come to the light of, of Christianity, come to the light of Christ. This is what, this is what uh, Jesus says in John 3 verse 21. Whoever lives by the truth, that means following Jesus, repenting of your sin, turning to him, coming to him for new life. Whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have, been, have done has been done in the sight of God. God wants our actions and our hearts to be open and plain before him. As the UK government shuts down the conversation when it comes to Islam, we question something very, very simple. God created men and women, God gave them brain, with lots of, lots of brain cells. The moment when you tell them, do not talk about ideology of Islam, you are saying to them, please get rid of some of your brain cells because they are not useful to criticize, to critic, which is unacceptable. It is unacceptable. Let's read the question again. Her Majesty's government, whether in pursuit of their anti-terrorism strategy, will require preaching in mosques and teaching in madrasas in England and in Wales to be monitored for hate speech and for hate speech on non-Muslims. Quran makes it very clear. Quran doesn't use very loving language towards people who are not Muslims. Mm. No. Quran is not full in love the worst of with creatures. people who God made. Mm. Quran is not Quran is not full in love with Jewish, with Christians, with pagans. Quran identifies Christians and Jews as the worst of creatures. Mm. Allah Himself did that. He doesn't Allah love the unbelievers. Doesn't love Believers, we want freedom of speech back, even to be discussed in the House of Parliament. Because if you cannot criticize ideology, you are telling them get rid of your brain. And as you said, sister, Jesus makes it very clear. Yeah, absolutely. Jesus doesn't want anybody to be in darkness. Jesus wants people to come to him, the light, the light of the world, and he wants falsehood to be exposed for what it is so that people can know the truth about Jesus. We want Muslims to know the truth about Jesus so they can have a chance to repent and follow him. Amen. Amen. Bye. What are we doing now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good.